Joining us, we've got six things that you should know, and we're taking a look at how your health is affected in relationships, and number one on our list. It's a new study that suggests married people may have a lower risk of heart disease. Yeah, re Research Oh, sorry, Josh. Go ahead. Do you want to read I'm that? I'm taking that one. Researchers <laughs> analyzed more than 30 studies that included information for more than 2 million people. They found that unmarried people had a 42% greater risk of developing cardiovascular disease than married couples. Interesting. And they also had a 16% higher risk of coronary artery disease. The, the data also showed that the risk of developing heart-related diseases were greater for formerly married people than for currently married people. Huh. Hmm. That's interesting. And number two on our list for older couples, getting and staying married may lower your risk of mental decline. As you age, researchers reviewed 15 prior studies finding married people had more than a 40% lower risk of developing dementia than single people. The findings do not prove marriage is the sole reason behind the lower risk of dementia, but the team notes previous research has linked marriage to a variety of other health benefits. Maybe we need to consider this marriage thing. Yeah, I there you know. go. Maybe there are some. Maybe one there day. There are some good things. <laughs> And number three on our list, letting blood sugar drop may lead to a fight with your spouse. A study found low blood glucose levels reduce self-control, making it harder for someone to control their anger. I feel like that uh, would probably lead to a fight with anyone. Definitely. Low blood sugar, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I don't think it matters if you're a spouse, friend, whoever. <laughs> uh, researchers say people tend to be most aggressive toward, quote, intimate partners as a person's energy depletes throughout the day. You may have trouble maintaining self-control, and that can result in using aggressive behavior inside the home. Mm, I'm, I get angry when I'm hungry. Hangry, is that what the, yeah, the term they call hangry. it? Yeah, definitely. I get a little scary. I've had to deal with that. I know how it is. <laughs> I'm so thankful we have <laughs> oh that kitchen gosh. now in every show. <laughs> And number four, watch this healthy couple stop halfway to the finish line to say their I do's. Friends and family awaited with balloons, a veil, and the rings. The yeah, ceremony lasted about six minutes, and the couple finished the race together as Mr. and Mrs. Phillips. Hmm, that's pretty cool. And number five on our list says, when you hug it out, you may be doing something good for your health. That's because researchers say hugs can improve your physical and mental health, as well as strengthen your relationships. Yeah, people were asked about their mood, if there was any conflict in their day and if they received a hug. They found on days when hugs were received, people had more positive moods and reduced negative feeling. And the trend was true regardless of gender, age, race, marital status, and average mood. This is true. Gotta get we share hug a hug and then it day. makes it so much better. There it is. Absolutely. And last on our list, although it's not the funnest thing to do, sometimes relationships just don't work out. It's better to figure that out and perhaps let go of your separate go and go your separate ways before you get married. Yeah, holding on can really take a toll on your mental health, as Kim Hutcherson explains in today's Health Minute. There comes a time in many relationships when one or both of the partners wonder if their union will last. Some relationships continue even though the couple no longer feels fulfilled or happy. So why is it hard for some couples to pull the plug? Two recent studies set out to answer the question, why would someone stay in an unhappy relationship? The studies followed close to 1,900 people for 8 to 10 weeks. In both studies, the more dependent someone thought their partner was on the relationship, the less likely they were to break up. Concerns about kids, finances, lifestyle, and community standing can also influence a person's decision to stay in an unfulfilling relationship. But studies show that not wanting to hurt the other person's feelings was the main reason they stayed. Therapists say this approach doesn't do anyone any good and can actually be selfish because you're taking away your partner's right to make a choice. Instead, be honest. There's no guaranteed way to break up without causing some pain. So the best thing you can do is tell your partner the truth and make sure you take care of your own mental health. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. Okay, breaking up with someone can be really tough though. And I, have, yeah. I feel like I've had some pretty bad reasons like it's not you it's me right you're too good for me you know is that, what, is that what you use you're like i'm sorry you're too good for me i have to leave now yes is that your line breaking up with someone is just really it's not tough you for it's me. me yeah i'm gonna come up with a better one okay if that ever happens we'll work on I'm that i'm planning on breaking up with anyone anytime soon <laughs> we got more coming up on living local so stay with us